In this video, I'm gonna compare the DJI Mini 2, the affordable mini drone against a contender. I finally found one, the Potensic Atom right here. I'm gonna compare them on the spec sheet, features, the remotes, and I'm gonna take them out on the same field and fly them side by side. All right, DJI Mini 2. If you wanna get into drones for the first time, this is a good option. They also have the uh, Mini 2 SE. This one is 379, the Mini 2 SE is 299, and it has 2.7K video instead of 4K, and not as good a transmission signal. This one is $320, and it's also 4K, 12 megapixels, so they match up really well. Uh, and both of them have the key important uh, aspect of a video drone, which is three axis st stabilization. So one, two, and then the turning, the twisting motion, both of them are fully stabilized like that. Okay, how else do they compare? Flight time is about the same. They say about 31 minutes, 34 minutes, and then speed, uh, 29 miles an hour, and they say this one's a little faster, 35 miles an hour. How they're different is the transmission signal, about uh, 3.9 mile range and about 6.5 mile range, so a lot more transmission signal on, on this guy. Uh, 243 grams, 245 grams. So uh, the magic number and the most competitive part of business is the sub 250 gram uh, category because the FAA said once you're under sub 250, you don't have to register it. Uh, so it's more, more open, you know, less to worry about. And the reason is when they're light like this and they have light motors, you know, they can't be as dangerous. You know, they can't be weaponized or carry some dangerous stuff. You know, they're just, they're just carrying their own camera. They can barely carry a load, all right? So before I get out on the field, I will show you the accessories, the remote uh, of this thing. Uh, this is a fly more kit. Both have uh, about $100 for an extra battery, extra char or three batteries, extra charger, 430 for this, and you know, maybe close to 500 uh, for the DJI. But the remote for the DJI is here. Both of them don't have a, dis a display and the sticks uh, are, are all hidden. You put them on. Both have USB-C rechargeable and the phone goes right here. So you put the phone right here, right on top. And then the wire, you connect the wire to your iPhone or Android. Fairly heavy little thing. And then the Potensic is kind of unique uh, in the remote. Also uses a phone. Uh, so a phone, the best way to use a phone when you have a uh, a drone like this, it's just have, use one of your old phones. That way it's not so big and uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, have a, have a case that gets in the way or uh, a, a lot of apps and people calling you uh, while, while you're controlling it. Uh, so there you go. A little bit odd, but it does kind of work. You're, the only thing is your hands get far apart. Um, and then the, the antennas are not on the, uh, are not centered. Okay, so wired as well, USB-C rechargeable. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out on the field and show you a side-by-side -side comparison of these two drones and uh, give you some commentary, a conclusion at the end of this video. And there it is, you can see it struggling with the wind, but it's right over we're gonna take off and land on this blue part, so we'll see how it goes. So the, the struggling with altitude. And the first thing we'll do is we'll pivot. All right, quite a bit of wind noise, so we will voice over this. So here is the Potensic Atom on a pivot, and it pivots very well. It doesn't toilet bowl or wander around. It basically pivots in place. So the GPS is very, very good on this machine. All right, I'm gonna go forward, stop. So it doesn't quite stop on a dime, but it does try to break. I'm gonna go back. So right there, so a little bit of movement, but not too bad. It just won't stop as quickly as the DJI. Uh, take note, I did this video on a brighter morning than the DJI. So 
So pretty good handling characteristics on the Potensic. It surprised me. Has landing sensors at the bottom, as you can see, but very responsive, you know, in windy conditions, very nice to fly, good to learn on. Image quality too is good. So what you're seeing on the big screen is the Hero 10 footage of the GoPro and on the left lower corner that's the actual video of the Potensic. So nice and bright, good colors. And here is the return to home. It, it pivots to face the direction it's going and then it tries to remember what how it was facing when it took off landing is quick and then it slows down right at the last second it missed the blue mat by maybe three four feet so not quite there but not bad all right i think we'll go for another flight little takeoff and then we will show you the video image of the potency compared to the DJI side by side. So there you go. Maybe I'll go for some fast flying here. So pretty fun, pretty fun little machine with uh, nice image quality. Oh, there's the rate of ascent goes up pretty high and here is the image quality the Potensic is on the right and the DJI is on the left definitely more light uh, during the time of day that I did the Potensic uh, the DJI image very comparable has a little more more detail when, when I zoom in a little I suspect a little better sensor. Those leaves are very sharp on the DJI. But the Potensic is very, very comparable as well. And so are the, the photos from these two machines. So now we'll go to the full test of the DJI Mini 2. And let's record a video. So there you go. Took off very nicely. Elevation is good. Elevation maintenance. A little tilt because of the wind. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate. Uh huh, uh huh. A little bit of drift. A little bit of shimmy. So nowhere near as good as the Mini 3 or the Mini 4. And I'll stop there on the far end. We'll see if it corrects itself. Oh, it's correcting itself. It's correcting itself. So it knew that it was lost. All right, not too bad. Oh, I did correct itself very nicely. Okay, now I turn the other way. Interesting. So same. And it does have a little shimmy. And this is the full speed, so it's not very fast on the spin. Uh-huh. Okay, now I'm gonna go, let's say I'm gonna go beyond that bike over there. Go right on top of the bike. And stop. Oh, it brakes pretty nicely. Brakes pretty nicely. Tries to maintain its position, turn a little bit, and then I'll try to go back to the blue mat. So it breaks, and then there's drift. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a a circle. So I'm just going full tilt. It's losing elevation. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So I need to go higher because it's losing elevation while it is jamming right along okay now it's trying to correct it
okay so losing elevation when it goes full speed have, uh, on flight okay so now let's return home and it says I'm too far I'm too close so I go return to home aha uh -huh. why is it not giving me the option to return to home oh here we go it has to be far for me to return to home okay Okay, now it's going to the prescribed elevation. Okay. So let's do the rate of ascent. Comes pretty good. Not as fast as the little the mini three or four. So it's a nice flying machine, no doubt about it. Super accurate. All right, what do you think of that coverage, right? Pretty cool, huh? So both of them impressed the heck out of me. I've been using DJI Mini 4 Pro almost exclusively for all my travels, and that is amazing. Um, I'll have a review of that pretty soon. But the flight characteristics of this, these, two thing, these two drones are almost identical. Very good, very fast, and very accurate. Um, so very good GPS signal. This one breaks a little harder, so when you stop, full speed, you stop, oh, it just goes like that. And so that's cool, it'll stop on a dime, so to speak. This one has a little bit more, um, a little bit more wander. So the big weakness of both these drones, not really so much of a weakness, it's just the budget price point, is neither of them have obstacle avoidance. So uh, just to get it out there, if you're looking to, to do tracking, uh, they do have, they each have their own patterns, you know, uh, rocket, uh, drony, uh, where they can kind of circle around you. So they're both good at that, okay? So what is my conclusion? Uh, 320 for, for this, Potensic, 379 for, for this guy. Uh, it's, what, what is that? A $60 difference. Uh, definitely DJI is better. Um, it's better uh, at everything. This matches up pretty nicely. Uh, maybe a little faster, uh, maneuverable as well. But DJI is just, you know, in the business of controlling uh, uh, transmission quality. Also, I was losing signal here when I was going very far. This one, bulletproof signal. Um, so the signal quality is kind of important. And then the other thing I want to talk about is everything that comes with DJI, you know. I'm sure you've heard of DJI. They're kind of the Apple computer uh, of drones. Such a powerhouse. And I have, I'm making a video here, 10 things why DJI is so good at what they do. Um, so Potensic, I've never heard of them. Uh, so they, they're up against the juggernaut. And I think if you are the no-name brand, you gotta be so much better, so much cheaper to compete against it. So they're gonna have a hard time competing against DJI. Things like, uh, 10 years of experience uh, with DJI uh, where they know already know what's going to go wrong or what features to work on next because they've been doing this so long. In fact, this thing is two years old. They have uh, models super glad that there's a contender finally to the DJI juggernaut. I mean, I think if this one goes on sale like significantly, uh, it'd be a good one uh, to learn on and, and take pictures and video with. It DJI is still better and it's just just an impressive machine. Thanks a ton.